and welcome to Catalan News. The campaign is on. Catalan Party started the run-up of the December election at midnight. Some of the candidates who were freed from prison yesterday are already taking part in political events. Meanwhile, other candidates are still in Brussels. Their extradition cases have taken a U-turn today, with the Spanish justice system withdrawing their international arrest warrant. In today's show, we'll get you the latest developments in the Catalan political arena, and we'll also remember Carla Santos, a multi-talented artist who passed away yesterday. Carlos Puigdemont is taking part in the electoral campaign from Brussels. He has spent more than one month there now, along with four of his deposed cabinet members. They testified at a Belgian court yesterday over their extradition case, and the judge was going to decide on December 14th whether they would be sent back to Spain. Yet today, their extradition cases took an unexpected turn. The Spanish Supreme Court today lifted the extradition order for Catalan President Carlos Puigdemont and four of his ministers all of whom are currently in Belgium. The president travelled to Brussels on October the 30th, claiming he did not trust Spanish justice to offer him a fair trial for his role in Catalonia's push for independence. The national court sent half of his government to prison and issued a European arrest warrant for Puigdemont and his ministers. But things have changed since the Supreme Court took over the case. Yesterday, six of ten imprisoned Catalan leaders were released, and today the extradition order was withdrawn. Even some rivals of the pro-independence parties in the upcoming election welcomed these recent moves as facilitating political debate. In these elections, everyone has to be capable to explain our proposals. We also have to be capable to explain how we have arrived to here and explain how we want to get out of here. Sortir. The reasons for the Supreme Court withdrawing the order are clear. After weeks of hearings, the willingness of the Belgian judiciary to extradite Puigdemont was far from clear and a rejection of the order would have conditioned the judicial process in Spain against other government members. The judge added that the events under investigation were carried out by all defendants in a concerted way, therefore the same court should decide for all of them. The Belgian prosecutor confirmed today that the judge's decision puts an end to the extradition process. El efecto de la supresión de los cinco órdenes es que las medidas cautelares no tienen efecto a partir de ahora. Additionally, the judge said that there was no need to extradite Puigdemont and his ministers because they were running in the election and therefore aimed to return to Catalonia at some point. With the arrest order at the national level still in place, the question now is when will Puigdemont return? Perhaps a few days before the election, or maybe the day of the first session in the Catalan parliament when he will be expected to occupy his seat as an MP. The answer to the question could be the umpteenth plot twist in a political story that has no shortage of surprises. While some leaders are in Belgium and others still in prison, the election campaign has begun. In fact, some of the deposed pro-independence ministers freed yesterday are already taking part in party gatherings. At the same time, the unionist tickets are vowing to stop independence once and for all. Polls are not clear on whether or not the candidacies for the Catalan state will keep the majority in parliament won at the last election. The political campaign kicked off at midnight with all parties aiming high. The first images in the final stretch to the December 21st election included pro-independence candidates campaigning only hours after being being freed from prison. This means Catalan Minister Mundo is standing for the Esquerra party, while Ministers Rull and Turull have already taken part in an event for Puigdemont to get a for Catalonia ticket. They were all released on Monday after being jailed for 32 days. M'ha demanat que, si us plau, no descanseu ni un segon per guanyar la llibertat i per guanyar les eleccions del 21 de desembre. Aquesta Catalunya que estem construint, aquesta Catalunya lliure, ens conjurem a que mai, mai, mai ningú no pugui ser empresonat per defensar lliurement i pacíficament les seves idees. The Catalonian Common Candidacy is against the declaration of independence but also rejects the imprisoning of officials. Barcelona Mayor Ada Colau has said her party considers the pre-trial detention of the dismissed ministers to be an abuse. Apart from the imprisonments, the violence by the Spanish police during the October 1st referendum is also said to become a hot topic. In fact, the Coup party kicked off its campaign by placing carnations in a school where Spanish Spanish police use violence to try to stop the voting. Yet Ciudadans, the main unionist party in the country, refuses to see the October 1st ballot as a legal one. Its leader, Inés Arrimadas, believes that the only valid election is the one taking place in 16 days' time. Perquè ara sí, votarem. Oi tant que votarem. Ara sí que anirem a votar, amb un sens de veritat, amb un sens electoral, amb dades 
agafades amb tota la legalitat. She's willing to set up a unionist government should the parties rejecting independence prevail, yet the socialists refuse to be part of an executive with right-wingers. They stand for a prompt end to direct rule of Catalonia, despite having supported its implementation. It's quite a different opinion to that held by the also unionist People's Party. I defended an application of Article 155 de un año, un año y medio, para corregir algunas desviaciones en el ámbito de la educación, en el ámbito de los medios de comunicación públicos. The imprisonment, the October 1st vote, the declaration of independence and Article 155 are all set to become the most hotly debated issues in an atypical campaign that has only just begun. Catalonia is experiencing its first political campaign under the direct rule of the Spanish government. The new executive resulting from the election won't have time to make a new budget before the year ends, so Madrid is preparing a budget extension. And one of the issues it is working on is the review of financial support that the Catalan government gives every year to digital media in the Catalan language. A Madrid official said that some sites are telling lies. During the past few months, journalists and news outlets have been in the eye of the storm. A manifesto promoted by the Association of Journalists of Catalonia demanded to put an end to political and judicial interferences. According to them, they threaten freedom of press, speech and information. The main Catalan media associations claim that cutting subsidies could do serious harm to media pluralism in the country, as well as damaging the sector. Moving on to economy, today positive figures for tourism and industrial production in the country came out. Figures show that tourists spent almost 5% more money in October compared to the same month in 2016. On average, visitors spent 187 euros per person every day. That means that every tourist spent just over 1,000 euros during their whole vacation in Catalonia. What's more, industrial production rose by 7.8% in the country, also in October. Despite the political tension, including the Spanish police violence and the declaration of independence, production in the industry sector increased more in Catalonia than Spain overall. And now, time for culture. Salvador Dali is arguably one of Catalonia's most celebrated artists. A pioneer of the Surrealist movement, his artistic career spanned generations, and now information of all of his pictorial works has been put together. A directory of around 1,000 of his pieces has been created by the Dali Foundation, available for anyone with an internet connection to see. It's been a long time in the making, but after 17 years of research, the Gala Salvador Dali Foundation has presented the fifth and final part of the Surrealist Artist Catalog Cresonet, a directory of all its pictorial works including around a thousand pieces by the Catalan genius, including the persistence of memory. The first part of the catalog was presented in 2004, marking the centenary of Salvador Dalí, who was born in the Catalan town of Figueras in 1904. The aim of the project is to put as much meticulous information as possible online, thus giving an overall posthumous insight into the artist's career. The fifth part of the database includes 320 works by Dali, dating from 1965 to 1983. Most of the pieces are in possession of the Dali Foundation, but the project has also documented 36 missing works, as well as nine that were destroyed. The catalog can be consulted free of charge through the Foundation's website and is accessible in four different languages – Catalan, Spanish, English and French. In the words of Fiona Mata, the curator for the Center of Dalinian Studies, the project has a life of its own. The multi-talented artist Carlos Santos sadly passed away yesterday. Beginning his career as a pianist in Barcelona, he later dedicated himself to other artistic disciplines like photography, cinema and literature. Before we go today, we leave you with some images of one of his later works entitled Schubert Naklas Umitz a surrealistic performance proving he really was at the avant-garde of the cultural world. Enjoy and see you on Thursday with our next show after tomorrow's bank holiday. <laughs>